Welcome. Welcome to Worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're very glad that you're here on June 6th. Our sermon title today is, Does This Look Right to You? Our welcome words come to us from Brene Brown, who wrote, Love is not something that we give or get. It's something that we nurture and grow, a connection that can only be cultivated between two people when it exists within each one of them. We can only love others as much as we love ourselves. Shame, blame, disrespect, betrayal, and the withholding of affection damage the roots from which love grows. Love can only survive these injuries if they are acknowledged, healed, and rare. Let us continue to ponder these words as we begin with our call to worship. When earth's rulers hear what you have to say, O God, they'll sing of what you've done, how great the glory of God. Finish what you've started in us, God. Your love is eternal. Stay with us now that we may say thank you. And now let's join in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Join with me in our prayer of confession. When we forget that God's ways lead to the blessings of justice and mercy, when we forget that God's ways lead to blessings of safety, health, meaningful work, when we forget that God's ways lead all to the blessings of the shared abundance of God's creation, Lord, have mercy. Surely the good news is that God, that Jesus reminds us, who is my mother and who are my sisters and brothers? All those who do the will of God are my brother and sister and mother. In Christ, we are forgiven all our failed efforts at community and invited afresh to rejoin the family of God, seeking blessing for all. 
uh, join with me in our blessing of our tithes and our offerings. In fact, all the gifts that we return to God. Generous God, use these gifts so that we may be part of your great work in this world. Through our living, bring justice and love closer to all, not just in our community, but in the world. Strengthen your church so that we may grow together each day into a powerful voice for healing and peace. Amen. Gospel reading today comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. And when Jesus' family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And he called to these people and spoke to them in parables, saying, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided... He cannot stand, but his end has come. And no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you that the people will be forgiven for their sins and what are blasphemies they might enter. Uh, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and said, called him, saying, A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my brother and my mother? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and a mother. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it prove to be a blessing to our hearing, our doing, and our living in the days ahead. Amen. Does this look right to you? Well, how many times do we manage to say that? We might use a ruler to measure a straight line, and we could answer probably our own question. Or we might use a level to determine if a picture is handing, hanging correctly. And what about stored food in the refrigerator? Yep, that's it. We pull it out of the refrigerator, and if it even looks a little fuzzy or smells oddly, we asked someone nearby for a second opinion. Does this look right to you? This smells awful. Smell this. And we tell some unsuspecting person to stick their nose in something that we already discovered smells pretty foul. But what would you do if crowds were listening to someone who said that God was the ruler of of everybody instead of the earthly ruler. And what if people in those crowds believe the man who was telling them that? And how do you determine, does this look right to you? Yeah, see, that's the problem. How do you determine if it's really the Holy Spirit guiding the person 
who sharing experiences of grace, spiritual gifts, such as faith, healing, and expressive worship and evangelism. Can you be sure? In the Gospel of Mark, Mark brings three groups together in the passage that we just heard. Three groups who are motivated, well, you know the story. Some in the crowd, some of the three groups are motivated to believe and to follow Jesus enthusiastically. One part of the group wants to remove the instigator because he's just going to cause trouble. And then there's another part of this group that's gathered. Yes, they want to remove Jesus because he might be harmed by someone else. I mean, really, is he in his right mind? And how do you know? Fueled by hearsay, Jesus' family want to keep Jesus safe from Roman authorities and whoever else might put him in danger. So they do what, well, what happens today, right? You want to, the last ditch effort is to pull the insanity defense. And they do this even before they hear Jesus say anything or watch him heal on anybody. So what else would provoke someone to claim that God rather than Caesar is the ruler and that the kingdom has already come? Yes, that's right. He does that. If you read ahead a little bit in Mark in chapter 12, he says, if there's healing being done by the Spirit, then the kingdom of God has already come. It's here. God is in control. Not Caesar. Not Rome. Jesus tells them that his family is not even defined by blood, but by Spirit. And he tells them that those in the crowd are his family because of that. Well, in those crowds, they just love to hear that. In fact, Mark says that the crowds are so enthusiastic that they don't even leave Jesus, even to find food, for fear that they might miss something that Jesus might share with them or some healing miracle that he might do. And last but not least, the other part of the crowd is the scribes from Jerusalem. Yeah, the ones that came from the temple. And they claim that no doubt about it, Jesus, Jesus has to be at the beck of call of Beelzebul, known as the Lord of the Flies, or Satan, the king of demons. And that guy must be possessing Jesus, because, I mean, really, how else could he drive out demons? Certainly their pronouncement carries the authority of the temple and the spin they put on what Jesus is doing is meant to persuade the crowd to leave Jesus and to go back and listen to the scribes and the Sadducees. You know, crowds are difficult to control. We find that even in our own day. And they had to be difficult back then. Nobody had bullhorns or loudspeakers. So the scribes were trying to control the crowd by controlling what we would call the spin. So they worked to discredit Jesus. And the scribes themselves, you can tell, have already lost hope that God is in control. They've made themselves in the ones in control. They've witnessed the changes in those whom Jesus has healed. They've seen that people are restored to the purposes that God created them, that the people have been empowered to care not only for themselves, but now for those around them. And they recognize that these people who have been healed by Jesus are in a covenantal relationship, not only with God, but with one another. They are stronger together, bound by the Spirit. And so Jesus tells them, the scribes, that evil cannot ever end in good. 
So if they really follow that logic that Jesus is possessed by the king of the demons and thereby is able to call out demons from people, that just doesn't make sense. No, nothing evil plus evil does not equal good. And it's apparent to those who are ardent followers of Jesus that he's doing good works by the power of God. So they're not going to bother to listen to these scribes. The scribes have rejected the one who could have brought them forgiveness. And they have not only failed to see the light, but they've also managed to call the light darkness. And that's why Jesus launches into the one thing that's probably not forgivable is to blaspheme the spirit and the power of the spirit when it indwells in someone like Jesus. And why is that sin unforgivable? It can probably be easily seen. It's the sin of refusing forgiveness itself. So the scribes have shown that they no longer recognize what is good or that good comes from God, not Satan. They no longer value what's good and they no longer strive to make it happen for the people. So having decided that Christ is satanic, because that's an easy way to get rid of him, they're not open to receiving Jesus's help and so they're not going to be candidates for salvation. Jesus stands before us as the image of unity and wholeness, integration. And Jesus reveals the division that occurs in our own lives. Not just the lives of the crowd that day, the family the ardent followers and the scribes, but the division in our own, the houses that cannot stand divided, the crumbling of our own governments and kingdoms. Where is our own house divided? And how and to what extent have we created conflict and divisions within our relationships? And in what ways do we live fragmented lives that require the healing of the spirit? What is it that shatters your life? Is it anger or resentment, greed, insecurity, perhaps perfectionism, maybe sorrow and loss, fear or envy or guilt or loneliness, or maybe a mix of several of these? As Michael Marsh wrote, there are all sorts of forces things and events that sometimes even people by which our lives are broken and through which we are separated from God and others and ourselves. Christ is stronger than anything that fragments our lives. He binds the forces that divide and heals the wounds that separate and refashions the pieces into a new, whole, and empowered human being. There's nothing about your life or my life that cannot be put back together by the love of God in Christ through the power of the Spirit. Now, does that look right to you? I hope so. Amen. Join with me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for calling us to be your own and for healing what ails us, not only internally, but in our relationships with each other. And sometimes we do, we try to disparage someone else to make ourselves look better. Somehow you understand. It's twisted, we get it, but you're right. Evil plus evil doesn't result in good. And so we come to you. We come to be led, to be fed, 
to be guided, to be listened to, and so we can follow. Lord, help us. Help us to help others. Help us to help ourselves. To be healed in the spirit. To be made whole. To be empowered. And to make this world, with your help, into the kingdom of God. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught all of his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us sing our closing song, God Be With You. Now may you finish what you've started in us, God. Your love is eternal. Go with us now into the world that we too may say thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa today. If you're in the area, you're welcome to join us at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Our building is still in the process of being uh, restored from the derecho last August. So we are worshiping outside on the lawn. Bring a lawn chair or sit in your car and listen to us on FM radio. May you have a blessed week.